Okay, question 12 was a very, very poorly answered one, and it's because of the notation used, unfortunately. They've used this a few years in a row. Once you've spotted the notation now, you'll realise it's not too difficult. A and B are related or combined in this operation to mean the following. A and B are related, or A and B uh, are, have this relationship, if you do the following to A and B. You square A and double it, then subtract 7a, then subtract b, then add b squared. So when it's saying x triangle 3 is equal to 0, it's saying for you to substitute x as a and substitute 3 as b, work this thing out here and make it equal to 0. So it tells us if x triangle 3, x triangle 3 must be 2x squared, 2x squared minus 7x minus 7x minus 3, because b is 3, and plus b squared, which is 9, plus 3 squared, which is 9. Let's work that out. It's 2x squared minus 7x minus 3 plus 9 is equal to plus 6. All of that, it tells us, is equal to 0. So we're trying to solve a quadratic equal to zero. We can try and factorise, we can try and use a formula, or we could even complete the square. Let's see if we can factorise just out of interest. Because the number in front of x squared is not equal to 1, the first thing we do is we multiply 2 by 6 to get 12. Then we ask ourselves the question, what two numbers multiply to this 12 and add up to minus 7? With some thought, you might realise that negative 4 and negative 3 do the trick. So if we're factorising this, we put a 2x minus 4, a 2x minus 3 equal to 0. Simplify this side here, divide out 2, and we get x minus 2, 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Two numbers multiply together to give 0, so either the first number, x minus 2, is 0, or the second number, 2x minus 3, is equal to 0. So that would give us x is equal to 2, or x is equal to, we'll add 3 to both sides, you get 3, and then divide by 2, you get 3 over 2. The answers are x equals 2, and x is equal to 1.5. Next question, we've got algebraic fractions here and they're asking us to show that solving this equation simplifies to solving that equation. Let's write out what we've got. 7 plus 10 over x plus 2 is equal to 9 over x. A bit like says, I hate the x's on the bottom on the denominators, so the very first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides of the equation by x plus 2. When I do that, every term on both sides of the equation is multiplied by x plus 2. Not just one term, every term. So let's do it on the left hand side. We're going to multiply 7 by x plus 2. We're going to multiply the 10 by x plus 2, but it's over x plus 2. And we're going to multiply the 9 over x by x plus 2. Okay, the x plus 2's here cancel because x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 is 1. Now I've still got an x on the bottom, this x on its own here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x. That means every term must be multiplied by x. So I'm going to do 7x plus 2 multiplied by x plus, this was just 10 now, so it's going to be 10x is equal to well, 9 over x multiplied by x just gives me 9, so I would get 9x plus 2. Now time to expand out. 7 times x is 7x, 7 times 2 is 14, so this is 7x plus 14. All of that's going to be multiplied by x, plus 10x is equal to 9 times x is 9x, 9 times 2 is 18. Keep going. 7x times the x Really, I could really think of this x as at the front. It makes it easier. x times 7x seven, is 7x squared. x times 14 is 14x. We've already got 
a plus 10x, and that's equal to 9x plus 18. Tidying up, I got 7x squared plus 24x is equal to 9x plus 18. Now I'm going to subtract 9x off both sides and subtract 18 off both sides. I get 7x squared, 24 take away 9x gives me 15x, and nothing take away 18 gives me subtract 18. That is equal to 0, and hence we have shown what we needed to. The equation is multiplying out some thirds and giving your answer in the form a root b, where a and b are whole numbers. Okay, R really a bit like algebra here, quite an easy question. The square root of 10 plus the square root of 2, all of that multiply by the square root of 15, subtract the square root of 3. Do remember this rule, if you're multiplying two numbers underneath the square root sign, then you can take the square root of the two numbers times each other. For example, the square root of 5 multiplied by the square root of 7 is equal to the square root of 35. But 5 times the square root of 7 is not the square root of 35. That's just, for example, 5 lots of root 7 that a mathematician writes like that. So that's just a bit of background to help us through here. Okay. Here we go. Root 10 times root 15 is the square root of 10 times 15, which is the square root of 150. Root 10 multiplied by negative root 3 is negative root 10 times 3, which is 30. Then we do this one. Positive root 2 times positive root 15 is positive root 30. And positive root 2 times negative root 3 is negative root 6. Okay, root minus root 30 plus root 30, well, they just cancel. So this simplifies to the square root of 150, subtract the square root of 6. Now, this isn't in the form a root b we want. We better have simplify our thirds. What's the biggest square number you can think of that goes into 150? Well, the biggest one I can think of is 25. So I would write this as the square root of 25, and 25 goes into 156 times, so that would be multiplied by the square root of 6, take away the square root of 6. Root 25 is 5, so this is 5 root 6s, take away 1 root 6, which gives me 4 root 6s. Hence the answer is 4 root 6, where a is 4 and b is 6. OK, last question, question 15. 9 to the negative 3 over 2. Well, first of all, let's work out 9 to the 3 over 2. We work that out, we change it into a unit fraction, so we work out 9 to the half, and then we cube it. We always do that. 9 to the half means the square root of 9, and we raise that to the power of 3. The square root of 9 is 3, and 3 cubed is 27. Now, any number to the power of negative another number just means 1 over the number to the positive power. So 9 to the minus 3 over 2 is just 1 over 9 to the 3 over 2. And we have 9 to the 3 over 2 is 27, so the answer is 1 over 27. Okay, last question. Quite difficult, this one, but I'll tell you a tip that should help you in future. Work out all solutions of the equation 8 to the power of m is equal to 2 to the power of m squared. Now, for any equations with indices, the base number always, always, always has to be the same, or else you can't do any algebra. So, 8 and 2 have to have the same base number. 2 is the lowest number possible. So could I make 8, could I write 8 as a power of 2? Well, I could. I could write that as 2 to the power of 3. 8 is 2 to the power of 3. And all of this to the power of m. That is equal to 2 to the power of m squared. Now, the power of the power rule. If you've got a base number to the power of, say, b, and all of that is raised to the c, it's the same as the base number to the power of b times c. So 2 to the 3 to the m 
is the same as 2 to the 3m, 3 times m, and that again is equal to 2 to the m squared. Now, once you're in this position, the base numbers are the same. The only way for these two equations to be equal is if the powers are also the same, now that we've got the bases the same. So 3m must equal m squared. Subtract 3m off both sides. 0 equals m squared minus 3m. Factorize. 0 equals, take an m out, m minus 3. Two numbers multiplied together to give 0. So either m is 0 or m minus 3 is 0, which means that the answer is m is 3. And check your answers. If I put 0 in here, 8 to the 0 is 1. M squared, 0 squared is 0, 2 to the 0 is 1. Yeah, that works. Put in 3 in here, 8 to the power of 3. Well, 8 times 8 times 8 is 512. Um, so it's quite a big number. And 3 squared is 9, 2 to the power of 9 is also 512. So this is a correct tier. Hopefully you found that useful. Um, the question paper was a difficult one, but do work through these slowly and it should help you with your future revision. Thank you very much.